child of God. Make your declaration. I am no longer, I am no longer a slave, a slave. To, sin. to sin. I am no longer, I am no longer a, slave a slave to fear. To fear. I am no longer, I am no longer a, slave a slave to sell. To sell. What? I am a child of God. Because they did not have that component called eternal life. 
Now, this component called eternal life is only made available when Christ came out of the grave. Hallelujah. 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 That's why we tell people that Jesus is the exact representation of God. Jesus is the exact declaration of God. All throughout the walk of Jesus on the earth, you will never see him kill anybody because he is the exact representation of God. God is not a killer. Hallelujah. You would see Jesus meet with an adulterous woman and what will he tell her? He wants to offer her something. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You will see the Old Testament prophets believe that the way we declare God is in acts of power and destruction. You will see Elijah already, he would he really has it so well how to kill people. You will see Elijah kill, he will kill 30. Another said to come, he will kill another 30. Another said to come until one of them beg him. If you did not know God well, you would think God was the one who loved to kill. And Elijah was doing the will of God. Until in the New Testament, you see Jesus walking with his disciples and then someone offends them. And then the disciple says, Don't let us call down fire to burn these people. Let's show them some power. They have disrespect. Hallelujah. And Jesus says, Do you not know which spirit ye are of? The Son of Man did not come to take life but to give it. And Jesus starts to reorientate our mind about God. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. And we, we, we see this, this Jesus very unlike what we have known before. We see this Jesus being came to the world to die for man. He came to die for man and he is on the cross. And what will this Jesus say? While the people he came to die for were mocking him, he looks up to the father. What did he say? God destroyed their family. No. He said forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Hallelujah. He starts to reorientate our mind at the what we call the vengeance of God. The vengeance of God is mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, forgive them. Hallelujah. And then we see the New Testament, we see the man called Stephen. Stephen is being stoned. And that's how I tell you, it is antichrist and demonic to be praying that your enemies die. Stephen is, I, I caught me, so you will not say, maybe I said it very fast. When you are saying your enemies should have misfortune, you are operating like a witch. You are operating like a devil. You are cooperating with demons. It's not the life in Christ. There is something perverted in the heart of a man who wants his enemy to die as a Christian. I'm going to say it again. There is something wrong in the heart of the man who wants his enemy to die and is a Christian. If a Christ, if an unbeliever wants his enemy to die, we say it is his reign. Mm -hmm. But the new creation, there is something obviously wrong in his mindset. If I wanted to talk to him, he said to the battle, his soonest is his faulty. His mental putting together of the person of God has, has suffered a catastrophic heat. He is now in a state. He, 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 is, in a, he, is, he, he, he is now a patient. He is a patient of, he is a patient of, 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 of theological madness. You know, he has, he, has, he has embraced, he has embraced an idea of God that has turned him into another man. Hallelujah. Are you getting my point this afternoon? Are you getting my point this afternoon? Yes, you can be a, you can be a man of God or a child of God and be mad spiritually. That's why Jesus corrected Peter. He said, "Do you not know which spirit you are of? The Son of Man is not into killing. Stop looking at Elijah." Meaning, if and Jesus was where Elijah was, where he was calling down fire, he said, "Shut up! That's not going to do it. Don't use power anyhow." Hallelujah. So Elijah, who would have been happy for the death of the people that Elijah killed? You think it's God? No. It's the devil that we celebrate it. Because in the Father is life. And there is no darkness in him. In your Father is life. There is no darkness in him. Hallelujah. You see, your mind can have always said it here. A lot of people try to fight us, argue with us. I said, whether you like it or not. Your heart can never be settled. If you ever think at any point in time that your earthly father is a killer, forget about your heavenly father. Your mind will not be settled. You will just think that one day he can be angry and the gun can face me. Hallelujah. And it will affect fellowship. You know, sometimes you want to stay your mind, then you remember. He killed it and he make it alive. Oh. You hear this 
unfortunate slants in the Old Testament that say things like, and an evil spirit from the Lord hit mm. Saul to make it look, it, it is disrespectful. And that is why it is easy to say nonsense when you don't have eternal life. Wow. For you to attribute an evil spirit coming from the Lord shows already theological madness. Mm. Because in him is life. Come on. In him is life. There is, there is no evil in him. He can't do it. I want you to understand the person of God. When it comes to God, he's impotent as it relates to evil. Come on, yeah. Meaning, if you say God do evil, you say, I, I don't know what you are talking about. Yes. If you tell God, God, can you, and that's why we're it's not our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that kills people. Mm-hmm. No. If you say, God, come and make that man unfortunate, he will say, I don't know how. Mm. Wow. You know, sometimes we use our prayer to push God. Lord, let him lose his job. And, and, God, and, and God tries to make him lose his, lose his job. Just God touches him and then he gets a promotion. <laughs> because the nature of the Father is totally and absolutely good. Yeah. There, you know people always say, Pastor Daniel, you know, you preach a side of God that is good. There is another side of God. No. God, God, there, the, 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 God is not... <laughs> but all right, no. I'm showing you one side. You know, no one offends you. Are you a nice person? I'm showing you one side. You don't want to see my other side. God is not like that. Your father can be like that. Your anybody, your foster parents can be like that. But God is one-sided. God is love. Get used to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, since we're talking about fathers, we you know we honor people in great race. It's a privilege to have my dad around. He comes once a year. Hallelujah. 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 As, as, as a young man, I learned the ropes of God from him. Amen. Amen. And one of the ropes of God I learned from him was I learned a nature of God in him. And it was the giving nature of God. You know? God is not two-sided, meaning, meaning he gives today, he doesn't give tomorrow. I learned that from my father, watch me. He doesn't have only days in giving. Hey, that's the way he is, you know. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this to help you see the nature of the father. That is why it becomes, I'm not going to my teaching. That is why it's naughty for you. You know, people should start using the word theological madness. They say, where did they get from? Let me just stop using it. People like quoting quotes. <laughs> There is something faulty in the way that you think. If you think you need to bribe God to bless you yeah. or help you, you don't have to. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. Learn your nature. People might say, you know what? Pastor, you know, there's a particular lady that came around us, you know, recently, not recently, a while. Pastor, I need a little, I need a little, I need a I said, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Don't make it, it's not a problem. You have it. You have the right. You have it. Like, what do I need to do? Do I don't know? Learn the simple basics of asking your father and knowing that he hears you. It's wrong teaching. You know, it's wrong teaching. Even I mean, oh, I'll have nice earthly fathers. If you have, there's, there's no shame. The father is not here. It's only my father that is here. <laughs> How many people here? You have not, If you don't have, it's not also a bad thing. We are just using an example. How many people have nice earthly fathers? All right. Okay. That nice earthly father that you have, some of the things that you ask God, if you asked him and that father had the ability to do them, will he do them? Okay. Talk, talk yes, to sir. me. Yes, sir. Will he do them? Uh, eh? yes. The people that said they are not, will he do them? Yes, yes. So if he will do them, and when you ask God for simple things and you think he will not do them, do you know what you're saying? You are saying your earthly father is better than God. We don't need to really explain faith, but just help you see what you are saying by your statements. That's why sometimes when we say you are finished praying and rejoice, you think we are actually having a laugh. Because we actually really believe that we have a good father. That's why it's in our confession. You know, Chris Tomlin said it this way, you're a good, good father. It's who you are. Nature stuff. Nature stuff is his nature. Yes, hallelujah. God. I said hallelujah. God. And so we're going into the you know into this uh, series on such riches in Christ. And we 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 we're taking it from where we've always taken it, Ephesians chapter 3. 
And we're reading from verse 8. It says, unto me, who am the least of all saints. Verse 8. I want you to read your Bible. Reading it with me. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? That's where we got the teaching for this one from. He said, what is this unsearchable riches of Christ? He said, to make all men see. Say see. See. Meaning that the things of Christ can be known and understood. Hallelujah. God does not want you to be ignorant about him. Amen. Amen. You know, don't adopt this idea that God's ways are higher than our ways. We don't know. It. What, he said, what we God do? We don't know. He, he can do what he likes. You know what I'm saying? Unquestionable, you are the Lord. <laughs> we don't just know what he does. That's not our God. Unquestionable. Meaning that if God looks at you and says, you are stupid. Unquestionable, you are the Lord. There are some things God can say. God cannot say to the righteous man, he's unrighteous. God cannot say to well, God cannot say to the Christian, he's unrighteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We think there's a sovereignty with God. Meaning, whatever he likes, he will do. Not true. If whatever he likes, he will do, there is no need for us to pray. Can just sit and say, whatever he says. Well, it's not everything God says does not come to pass. Amen. Amen. If not, there is no need for prayer. Hallelujah. You know, if God said it from Genesis that Jesus Christ would come, but people had to pray it and prophesy it. Did you notice that there was a particular woman who after she had her husband died, she stayed in the temple for how many years now? And she was praying for the coming of Jesus. Another man too, Simon his name, he was praying for the coming of Jesus. So the day Jesus will finally come, so that God would know that their prayers are answered, he sent them to the temple to meet Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. Praise right? So God does not want to be mysterious. So that's why he sent preachers. He sent the apostle Paul. He says, verse 9, to make all men see what is the fellowship of this mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God. So the nature of the... This, is the, this verse is the verse a lot of people do not understand. That the nature and the person of God was hid. Was what? Hid. It was hid. That is why we have the issues we have in the Old Testament. They did not know him a lot as they are told. It was hid. Tell everybody, it was hid. It was hid. It was hid, not because God is a hider. God likes hide and seek. No. The reason why it was hid was the capacity of the man that was on the earth at that time could not understand God. Amen? Amen. Imagine, I've got a son, he's five. Imagine me trying to teach him quadratic equation <laughs> or further maths. Imagine me telling him, son, X plus Y. Find X. You tell me, Daddy, X is there. <laughs> I can't find X because X is You said X plus Y. What is X? X is there. He can't get it. That same quadratic equation is what people use to solve problems in the city. Build apps. Imagine me putting him through that torture. Every day, we are teaching him. The biochemistry, that's evil, that's wickedness. So what do, so we, we spare him of that. What do we teach him? One plus one, two. That's okay for him, for now. Amen? That's the, that was what happened in the Old Testament. They did not, that's why the Bible says, if you want to know God, this is what you should know about God. God is love. John 1, 4 and 8 declares that. Amen and amen. Okay, let's continue here. He says that to make all men what is the fellowship of the mystery, who from the beginning of the world was hid in Christ, who created all things. God's intention, verse 10, was the intention was that angels, principality and powers in the heavenly places might know by the church the manifold wisdom of God. I've explained verse 10 many times. I said the, the purpose and the plan of God was that God was going to make a new man called the new creation, whom his creations, angels inclusive, would look at and say, Wow, Lord, you have always been saying you're merciful and lovely. I didn't know it until I saw this person. Wow. I see your love. I see your grace. I see it in only one being called the new creation. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what that verse is saying. The wisdom of God is revealed regardless of the stupidity of the devil. Amen, amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Alright, then we move on. Look at verse 14. What do you do 
after you have heard the gospel, he tells us, we pray. What do we do after we have heard the gospel? Pray. What do we do after we have heard the gospel? Pray. What do we do before we hear the gospel? Pray. We pray. A praying life is the life of the saints. You know people always say things, things that they did not say in the scriptures. Now, we are now under grace. Jesus prays for us. You have to tell the person, chapter what and verse what. Say prayer. 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 Is the New Testament way. It's the New Testament way. You know, he was talking to them in Thessalonica. He said, pray without season. Season. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. He says, now that I've told you chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, what, what did I tell you in chapter 1? I told you that God has blessed you. I told you that you are now blameless in His sight. I told you you are holy. I told you, you know what? You are accepted. You are now His son. I told you that you are forgiven of all your sins, present, past, and future sins. He says, you know what? After telling you all these major things, you know what you need? You need prayer. prayer. Why do you need prayer? You need prayer to understand the implication of what this thing the Father has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people for the first time, okay, how many people heard me and the first time they heard me, they were like, this man is talking Greek. I don't mean, I, like this man is talking nonsense. It, it cannot be. What do you mean? How many people, how many people heard me like for the first time? Yeah, Rachel, yeah. Some few people, precious you, precious you too. Okay. No problem. You know, <laughs> because is it what, what, what I was saying? Was it wrong? No. But your heart needs to be prayed for, and that's how we tell people here. When you have received this message, what ministry do you also receive? A prayer, a ministry of prayer. Prayer, prayer for who? Others and yourself as well. Because when Paul finished praying and revealing the mystery of Christ to these people, what did he do for them? Look at verse 14. For this cause, what cause? For what I've said, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. What should happen to you? That he would grant you according to what? Riches. The riches of his glory. The riches of his glory. Where is the riches of his glory? In the saints. So to grant you according to what is in you. That you what? You will be strengthened. Where does strength come from? Church? Does strength come from heaven? Where does strength come from? Where is strength? It's in you. If you are weak, where do you need to pull strength out from? Within. How do we pull strength out from the supply that is already within? Prayer. 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 Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So prayer is not God in heaven sitting down. And they say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Then God says, angels stand up. There he is. <laughs> do, do, no. What, that's why we said, you know, we celebrate the resurrection. It's a big deal for us. There is something that, you know, that's why when we are jumping, I say, oh, oh, oh. You, you can be new. I'm going to say, ah, ah. That's funny. <laughs> Pastor God on the altar. Everybody, oh, oh. Are you a man of war? Are you a vigilante? What's wrong? What did he say that you're jumping? That's what we, because, you see, what has happened to us? Everything we will need for life in God, everything we will need, he's packing now in the spirit. Yeah. Even our prayer is, we want to take from what is in our spirit to use on the earth life. In the earth, now for example, that's why the Bible says, prayer is a supply of the spirit in the, in the earth realm. Meaning that there is power on our inside. Mm. We are divine beings. We are supernatural. Toe to toe, we are supernatural. When issues of life face us and we want to stand tall, we have something we do. We take from our supply. Mm. There is a supply on the inside that we take from. So when we say, Fadizusus Predicata, you know this brother is doing? This brother is taking from what is on the inside for his daily walk. Are you getting my point this afternoon? Church, are you getting me? Yes, sir. That's why prayer is awesome. Since I pray for you, that you will be strengthened with might. You would think that to be strengthened with might would mean that, you know what, you're just praying. You will just feel fresh oil. You know the way this one puts oil on your head? It will not be coming down. It will not reach your beard. Like, ah, power. Father, thank you, Shudula. No, no. <laughs> The power, if you ever experience any power that is of God, where did it come from? From within. From within. Where is God? You know, you know, we always just do that analogy. We do this analogy and lift up our hands and look up as if no, God is there. It's just a form of reverence. 
Where exactly? Where is the postcode of God? Me. It's just like it to be funny. Imagine it to be funny. Everybody, let's pray to God. It will look funny, so we just want to portray, okay, our father watching them. So we... <laughs> but God is in the Christian. Amen. You must come to them with that reality. And so, brothers and sisters, via Shetty Kaya, there's someone here you need. What I'm talking about, you need it now. You're weak and down. What, what does this message tell you? You've got the supply that you need. After this service or wherever, take time out and take from that power that is within. It's there. So you go, what am I doing? So you don't think, what is it talking in, in codes? No. You go to your room, your closet, and then you start to withdraw. You know, someone who needs money in his atrium and knows that there is money in his bank does not do anything but go and withdraw. So you go, you go if you like, kneel, kneel. If you like, stand, stand. But if you're someone that lost sleep, don't, 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 don't lie on the bed and say, I'm praying. Don't do that. Your father will give you praise. <gasps> Some people didn't get that. Father will give you praise. <gasps> you're already snoring. So you go, you, you go to your room, and then you t- start to take a supply. Vidi Sadi, Suben Takita. Sitra Atushpe, Reke Siva Dandoso. You are not a weakling. Yeah. When you don't even know what to do, you know what to do. Yeah. I mean, when you don't know what to do, there is what to do. Yes. Zizi, koko, koko, Because the strength must come from within. God will not bring power. The Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So that's why that prayer is saying that you will be strengthened with might. By His Spirit. In your inner man. So that for me to understand this gospel, for example, you are listening to me for the first time and everything I'm saying is looking like Greek and Spanish mixed with Yoruba and Igbo. Listen, it's okay. <laughs> go back home and you go very sicko shabalati. Because understanding, where is understanding? Talk to you, where is understanding? It's there. The spirit know it. Yay! You know, I tell you, you are listening to a message eternal life is being preached. It's like someone like me. You listen to it tongue fully. He said, what did he say there? He said angels are the, are the, the new creation is the university that angels go to. Ah, that one script, script, he skipped my head. Varakakaka. Rewind it again. Zuzu. Mboko. Baba. Sinturu Sisi. There is a supply. Tell your neighbor, there's a supply. Say there's a supply. My brethren, you may be in this place, because I'm just speaking it out now. You may be in this place, and then you are you are actually tired. You don't know what to do. You have tried left and right and left and right and left and right. It's the same thing you do. Zikalu sheke, zuzin bahakatiya. You know, you know. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. We go to school. We we, we, we we train to be all that we can. But we've tried everything. We press every living button. But nothing seems to be happening. We can take advantage of the supply in the spirit. Hallelujah. You are in ministry. It looks like it's time to give, throw down the toy. Men mocking. Men abusing. You're weak. It happens to Christians. I'm not going to say, no, 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 we don't get weak. No, but there is something we can do. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He said that we will be strengthened. With might by his spirit in our inner man. What will happen? That Christ will dwell in our hearts by faith. What will happen? That will be deeply rooted and grounded in his love. Did, did you see that a prayer is to help you know much more the love of the Father? Yes. Amen? Amen. The strengthening on the inside, what does he help you know? Oh. Talk to me. You will, he says that we may know the love of God that surpasses all. You see the prayer? Because the love of the Father, that revelation of the love of the Father is what you need. What is the difference between a modern day Christian today and Paul, who for and the uh, disciples, who they put in prison and when they came out, they were giving themselves high five. Hmm. They said they were counting themselves worthy to suffer for Christ. Hmm. A Christian, he, they didn't put him in jail. He lost his job. He switches up his phone. <laughs> He's in a bad mood. Three months. What happened? Then when he gets another job, testimony time. Lord, you are so good. That's not a Christian. He's a Christian.
Christian. What is a baby? Paul, that received the same capacity you received, he said nothing can separate us. Nothing can... All of these things that we're experiencing, they are light affliction. You know that? That's why I'm not a complainer. I can't complain. My mentor said light afflictions. I read 2 Corinthians to check his life afflictions. He was beaten 39 times with rod. What have I experienced? I experienced traffic. <laughs> Sister Florence insulted me. <laughs> Can you complain that? And then you begin your life. What about what happens? That's my sister. That's sister. Don't talk to me again. And he said, you have a bad day, bad month. So, 1998, bad year. 1990, bad. 2001, bad. 2017, bad. Everything bad. Because people, listen to me, church. People will still, people will not leave this earth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you regulate your joy and your excitement around people and situations, these are you will be toxic to me. Today, glory! Glow! Tomorrow. <laughs> One man, that's, why the, that's why it's praying for you. Do you know what this prayer starts to do in you? It starts to make the things that matter to you no longer earthly things. But your focus and your mind is now on heavenly things. How to be a blessing to your neighbor. How to actually help the other. How to actually live out the life for God. Amen and amen. How to actually walk through tribulations. Amen and amen. Let me tell you the truth. Sometimes in your life, it's not as if when we pray about situations, God takes us out of that tribulation. What, do you know what he does? He strengthens us to walk through what we are going through. Even with pride, with joy, and with dignity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why I say sometimes people don't understand Christianity. Look at um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by what? Prayer. <laughs> prayer uh-huh. Supplication. Supplication. Remember, we're just talking about prayer now. Supplication, uh-huh. With what? With thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, uh-huh. What else happens? Make your request known unto the Lord. Yeah. Then what happens? And God will answer your prayer. Is that what he says? Yeah. What does he say? Yeah. The peace. You know, the things that spiritually are weighty, we don't always put emphasis on them. The peace of God. The love of God. See, this man is praying. Ephesians is praying in Ephesians chapter 3. He's praying about what? The love of God. He's praying in, in Philippians chapter 4. What did he say will be the implication of your prayer? The peace of God. What will it do to you? It will? Talk to me. Church, what will the peace of God do to you? God says that's the most important thing. Because if your mind is guided, if your mind has the right information, if your mind treats the things of God as the things that are important, he knows on this earth you're unstoppable. Mm-hmm. You know, it, now listen to me. He's not saying, and that's where a lot of people miss it. He's not saying, if you guard your heart, you tell your mind, God will give you plenty money. That's not what he's saying. He says you, give, you will experience some things that are real. Peace. You experience some things that are real. It's no longer Greek. The love of God, real. Hallelujah. Through situations where we people should be saying sorry to you, you're saying glory to God. All oh, things work together for my good glory. I'm, I'm not a kid. No, no, there's no need for sorry. And it's not a confession. Don't tell me sorry. It's already getting angry. <laughs> Brother, you went through something. Sorry, don't tell me sorry. Huh? Every day, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, you're really good. Something has happened to you on the inside. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look, you know, let's go there. Let's look at um, Hebrews chapter 12. We'll come back here. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you there? All right. I'll read from verse 1 and I'm going to verse 2. It says to us, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of weaknesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us. And let us run our race with patience. patience. The race I said before, 
us. I could do a teaching on patience there, but I don't want to do that now. Look at verse 2. What does it say? Looking unto Jesus. Who is Jesus? The author and finisher of our faith. What was Jesus a joy? Jesus. Let's see. Who for the joy that was set before him? When Jesus was on the cross, what was he thinking about? Was he saying, ah? Roman soldier, that's me. <laughs> My knee again. <laughs> now, this is, you know, I'm sharing with you, you know, I'm sharing with you realities of life. How to go through life regardless of the storms. That's what I'm sharing with you. So he's saying, brother and sister, <laughs> you can go through things, but this is how we want you to face them. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the, who for the, joy that was, set for him. Him. what was Jesus looking at while he was experiencing suffering? Joy, joy that was set before him. But the joy that was set before him, what was that joy? What was that joy? Just talk to me. If you read that verse to the end, you get it. That's why I said read the Bible. What was the joy that was said before Jesus that he was looking on when he was going through suffering? He, he was, what was he looking at? He was, see, he was looking at the fact that, yeah, I'm going through this now, but the time is going to come. I'm going to be king seated upon the throne. And not just that. Everyone who believes the message that is preached, they would be seated with me too. Hallelujah. And that particular, and people say, what's the big deal about salvation? He says, Jesus, that was what he was looking at when he was going through suffering, when he was going through troubles. He said, for the joy that is set before me, that no longer will I say, my father, we all can be brethren and say, Our oh, father. That's easy enough. It's okay. You know, there's some things we go through for the gospel sake. So we laugh and say, It might look so for now. But you know, the glory, glorious thing about it is this through what we are doing, somebody else will know the Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody else will know Jesus. Yes, somebody will be changed. You know, when sometimes we are up late at night writing those books. It's not because we cannot be playing hello love with our wives. When we, are, when we are, when we are, when we are, when we are riding and doing all those things and studying for services, it's not because we say, you know what? When myself and my wife look back over the years, thirty or forty, fifty or sixty, and we see the thousands of people that have come to know the Lord through our ministry, we can say, wow! For the joy that you know what one man would have done. Another thing is this, you can be a Christian and because you don't know who Jesus is really, you can live a wasteful life. Yeah. Because not only just knowing Jesus is enough, knowing Jesus and knowing who you are in him gives you purpose and vision. We are which not only one person or two people can read the word for Jesus. But how many of us can read the word for Jesus? All of us. All of us. That was what Jesus was rejoicing about. Amen. The salvation of men. It is what this thing that we are going through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. So if Jesus, if Jesus was rejoicing at the salvation of you and I, is our salvation worth rejoicing about? Yes, sir. Is this something that we can just think about when we are going through you know, a rough patch and say, Glory to God! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory. hallelujah. Glory. Say the peace of God. The peace of God. The love of God. The love of God. The joy of God. The joy of God. Is my reality. Is my reality. Praise Amen. Amen. So we now started to see that this love of the Father, follow now, this grace of the Father, 
This ability of the Father, we learned last week one thing, just one thing we learned last week. We learned that this ability of God on the inside of us, that we say we pray about to actually make us live the life better, it makes us forbear in love with another. How many people remember last week? Yes, we forbear in love with the other. What does it mean to forbear? It, to forbear in love does not say that you will meet perfect people on the earth. To forbear in love does not say that you are going to meet perfect people in church. People, you know, have you noticed that the chief critic is the major problem? Amen? 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 Let me say something to you, church. Don't always go around looking for faults. Mm. Be the kind of person that if you go around at all, be somebody that is there to be a blessing to people. Amen. Can we get a believing amen? amen. Wow. Can we get a believing amen? <laughs> One of the things that we learn in Christ is forbearing. Meaning that, you know what, this thing that this other person is doing is not particularly comfortable, it's not my style, but I will accommodate because the love of the Father dwells in me. The Father accommodates me, I accommodate with the other person. Can we get a believe in amen? amen. That's what we, and I said it last week and I'm saying it again. Think about forbearing with one another, playing out in relationships. Think about forbearing with one another, play, playing out in marriages. I always say this loud and clear. It is lack of forbearance most of the times among two Christians that always makes one person want to walk out the door. Amen? Amen. That's why this gospel is important. Amen? Amen. Church, amen. 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 Everybody just go cool. Uh. (laughs) It's the truth. That's why I said that what has happened to you in Christ, you have received a capacity to forbear. Two weeks ago, what did we learn? We learned that as a new creation, we don't walk the way the Gentiles walk. Amen? Amen. Do we learn it in Ephesians chapter 4? Yeah. Let's go there. Ephesians chapter 4, we are reading from verse 17. These are the things we learned last week. Or two weeks ago. This I say therefore, and I testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as the Gentiles walk. How do they walk? In the vanity of their minds. There is something that has happened to the mind of a Gentile. It is just one thing. He doesn't have eternal life. So how he reasons is not the way we should reason. Amen? Amen. How he does is not the way we should do. I've said it to Christians very many times. There are some things that people in the world do that are okay. But there are some things in the world that people of the world do that are not okay for you because of the life that you have received. You have come to the place where which you know the difference. Amen? amen. Church, amen. 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 Church, do, do you not know the difference? Yes. Yes. You do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Le- that's why I said, learn to prioritize what you have received, whom you have received, ab- above earthly applause. There are some things you know is the right thing to do, but because you know people will not applaud you, you don't do it. Hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. So we, he says, don't walk the way they walk in the vanity of their minds. And then we start to see what he is talking about. Last week we saw that one of the things that we do, which is not like the way that they do, is the fact that we forbear in love. Look at verse 3 of Ephesians 4. Come on. Quick, 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 quick. Are you in verse 3? Yes. Sir. All right, I'll read it from verse 2 so we can understand. He says, Verse 1 there. The prisoner of our Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the vocation where which you have called. He says, now walk the newness, walk in the newness of life. Verse 2. With all holiness and meekness, with long suffering. And I told you in the New Testament, meekness means when God says something, we don't have an opinion. The first thing we learn when we become new creations is that we, we learn the character trait of meekness. Meaning when God says something about us, we don't see any other thing but what he says. That's why the Bible says, he has said so that we may boldly say. say. What he says is what we say. That's meekness. I told people here, if God says you are righteous and you go before God in prayer and you say, oh, little sinner like me, you are being proud. Pride is saying what God did not say. Hallelujah. And that's why I said it to you last week that the James writes it, writes it this way. The Lord resists the proud and he gives more grace to the humble. And I said if I was going to write it, I will write it this way. I will say it, the, the man who does not receive, who does not receive what God says, re, re, rejects the grace of God. Amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Are we all together still? Yes. All right. So he says with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one with another. 
What would be the implication? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. What should be one of the priorities of the Christian life? Church, talk to me. Peace. Church, talk to me. Peace. Peace. Value peace. What did I say? Value peace. Value peace. Right now, scatter every man and say, yes, yes, yes. They know me. I won't agree. You should start to treasure peace. Because God will lead you by peace. If you are always everywhere, it must end in a fight and you must win. It will be difficult to pick the little, little limits of the Lord. Value peace. That's why God tells you, anywhere there is strife, run away from there. Evil will start happening there. That's what James says. Wherever there is bitterness, or no, wherever there is um, anger, malice. He says, uh, he says there is every evil walk. Value peace. Value peace so much that you know what? You know something is going to take away your peace. Just say, don't worry. Someone is arguing with you. You, you know the truth. If you say one plus one is twenty. Say no, no. One plus one is twenty-four. I said, brother, come. One plus one is twenty-four. Say no. Twenty-four. He said, one plus one is one plus one is twenty-four. Is twenty-four. Don't do it. <laughs> no, do you know why? I'm a baby. I'm a baby in mass. No. <laughs> Value peace. This is keeping the bond of peace, the unity of the spirits. Where would you see, what, what kind of place would you see the spirit of, you know, because all oh, I'm teaching, I'm teaching spirit dynamics. You might not know it now, but when we get there, you see it. How, where is the place, where is the life, where is the family, where which you will see the supernatural? Is a normal place. The place where peace reigns. Where what? Peace reigns. So value peace. He says keeping the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. Praise Church, hallelujah. Let's look at verse 4. Move on to something else. He says, for there is one body. Say one body. One body. Church, say one body. One body. How should you see your brethren in the, in the, in the faith? One body. Are... one body. How many people realize that if you realize that you are one body with the person sitting down beside of you, it will affect how you do to them? Yes, sir. Amen. Did you notice that this was the revelation that sparked off a revival? Permit my words, in the early church. It says none of them amongst each other lacked anything. Because the moment one person has a need, the other person is there to supply. One body. So that's the, he says that's the revelation I'm getting, getting to you. It, like for example, he says, this is what I want you to know. We are one body. It doesn't look like it, but the things of the spirit are spiritual. So it's not that we say we are one body and look at when do we join? No. <laughs> we are what? One body. Church, we are what? One body. What else does he say? He says we are one body. What else do we have in common? One spirit. Church, talk to you. What else do we have in common? One spirit. That's why, you know, when I always say, the Christian, the fellow Christian is one you honor. Is one you love. You're one with him. Amen and amen. Amen. Church, are you hearing me? Amen and amen. Amen. Are you learning something? Amen and amen. 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 One body. One spirit. Let's see how, um, how, how you're joined. Continue. What else does he say? Even as you are called to one hope of your calling. That the Father is coming back again and we're going to live that life with him. What else does he say in verse 5? Who do we have together? One Lord. One Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus. Sister Rachel, who do you pray? In the name of Abu Dhabi? No. <laughs> Jesus. Oh Lord. Amen. Amen. One faith. What is he trying to let you know? He's trying to let you know that, you see, the life in Christ is different now. We are now one with people. So it affects how we do to them. You know, the kind of love and fellowships we should have in local churches should actually make the world heavy. But do you know why we, do, we don't have it yet? It's revelation. It's, it's just revelation problem. You know, the way, you know, the way people are fighting each other, each other. You go on Facebook, Jesus Christ is the pantocratic son. He said, no, it can't be. Like, are you crazy? You're mad. <laughs> and they're not talking again. Why? This is revelation that caused the fight. No, it's stupidity. <laughs> we are one body. You know, somebody came to me and said, ah, Pastor, you will not believe it. You know, now I see that. You know, she got pregnant. You know, in fact, she know, open up a prayer. And she got pregnant. <laughs> I said, how many people have you told this thing? Said, now this, I'm not about to happen years ago. I just called her, I said, come. 
If it's your brother or your sister that got pregnant, will you become the chief microphone? And the person got cool. I said, yes. You see, most of the time, our problem is a revelation problem. We are ready to disgrace the other person. We don't know that we are one body. Yeah. You, know, you know, it humbles you sometimes when you're angry with somebody and you don't realize you're one body, so I'm angry with myself. Don't be angry. <laughs> so, oh, until he says, I'm sorry. Brother James, I will not forgive him. You don't know that you are one body. If, if my hand does something and it does something wrong, I will correct it and I'll say sorry. <laughs> right? And I will move on. It's not that I'll not be I'll not be keeping malice with my hand. Me keeping malice with my hand. So I will use this other hand to eat. They say, why, why don't you use your left hand? I'm angry with the hand. <laughs> did, did, did you think like that? You don't even think like that. But because we don't see that the other person is one body with us, we can treat the other person anyhow. You know when we say that our motivation is to live for others, it's not that we are stupid. We are actually living for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do you get my point? Yeah. My point is that we are now one body. 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 Yeah. That's why the Bible, James said, let me tell you something, you are, you are not a Christian yet. That's what he said. He said you have faith. He said faith without works is dead. You see somebody, he, he has a need. A Greek, he has a need. And you say to him, uh, thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to the Father. Father, we give you the labo sikaya. Go and God will do it for you. <laughs> and in your pocket right there, he said, it's the money that the man needs. And you say, Rika Koko, God is a father. He's telling me that this week is your week. No. <laughs> he says, why? You do not care that that guy might go home and be hungry and not have food to eat. It's because you do not know that you are one. Body. You have one Body. spirit. You have one Lord. You are in the same family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know how this it, it humbles us to treasure the saints? It humbles us to a point where we, there is no longer conflict. You know that how many people have noticed that if you're not careful, even in the local church, you can have unhealthy rivalry. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. For the last 16 weeks, she's the only one that is leading praise and worship. Who is she? Where is the good voice? The voice that I cannot even go after, after key 8. You can't even tell anyone. And you'll be saying this thing in your mind with yourself. You don't know that you are one body. body. The attitude should be, I lead praise or I don't lead praise. Hallelujah. We are all singing. Amen. 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 Not only I can't, ah, week 7. <laughs> you ain't gay, you ain't gay. Didn't I say we wrote out this thing? <laughs> it's, you know, that's the Teka Tuskopia. Zikrofat is the right to Shferatia. Zetro up to the mass, the crap to ash the grief of our cousins of Zia. Zetra act is for the Stella de Pa, Yena Stuvra Acta. Jedekla Actibokara actus for the Cassico Shamaniza. Is devotions, Likra and Tumeika. As you saw, she had to allow us to forget the colleague Sikanaya. Rest to forget the kiss of say, Arash no is the Ianas, Yos no Iasanaya, I'm Yos to Shiabadaya. As these words are coming your way, your heart has been renewed, and you're receiving promptings that is showing you the way that you should walk. Do not deny those promptings and walk in that light. Walk in that truth because this is the, this is the new way you are being shown. Amen. This is the way of the Father. Amen. This is the way of the Lord. Amen. This is the way that is being shown unto you. This is what you receive a vision to do. Where which you take the bodies of the Spirit and you go out and be a blessing to your world. Taking that law where which you have been loved and be a blessing to others. Amen. You turn your back from strife. You turn your back from malice. You turn your back from evil speaking. You turn your back from envy. And you embrace all compassionately the love of the Father. And you pour out yourself for the saints and others, even as the Father has poured out himself for you. Amen. Say it the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. He says, we are, you know, we are, we, 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 we are one. You know, you, you give me a little while. Don't worry. He says we are one Lord, we have one faith, we are baptized with one spirit, we have one God, one Father. Who is above all? And where is that Father? Me. Check what does that scripture say? Above all, and that Father is where? In you all. That Father is where? In you I want you to be sure. That Father is where? In you all. He's trying to say to us that we are now family. Amen. You know, 
You might not understand this, but when we're born again, do you know the reason why we marry only Christians? We marry, we marry in the family. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. So much more, the person that you marry, the person that you marry is much more first the child of your father. Hallelujah. The church person that you see at, at, in church, much more is first the child of your father. The very offspring of your father. Just the same way. And that's what makes you brothers. And then you start to live your life from that reality. That reality changes the way that you do. That's why he says something to us that I want us to see. Look at it. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's see there. Look at verse 25. I read from verse 24 first. He says, and you put on the new man. Which is created in righteousness and true holiness. See, I'm created, I'm in, created. Righteousness in righteousness and true holiness. holiness. See, I'm, I'm righteous by nature. I'm holy by nature. nature. Alright, then he goes to verse 25, our focus. He says to us, Therefore, put away lying. Let every man speak the truth to his neighbor. Why? Why? Do you see what the revelation of oneness with the other does to the local church? Does to Christians generally. We are now one. So he says, brothers, why are you lying for? When you lie to me, you lie to yourself. Are you getting the point? There is that there should be that openness and that reality. And that's why we are saying that we are training people better. How many people have told somebody something, and the moment after you told the person something, you heard it on CNN? Okay, you didn't get that. Okay. How many people have told someone something? It's supposed to be a secret. Have you heard those kind of secrets? It's between me and you, Sister Florence. Just don't tell anybody. He said, to God. He said, to God. Don't tell anybody. Do you know that? I have this in my bank account. He said, no, I don't tell anybody. Just to get to church on Sunday, and everybody is looking at you with the eye of how much you have in your bank account, and you know. I know a lot of people have experienced that before. We are which you have been betrayed by people. People have gone to your back and spoken evil about you. That's why we are sharing the gospel. So that we all will know what the truth is. And here, if you're listening to me worldwide, there is there, nobody's going to get chief critic in heaven. Where would you abuse and insult everybody? You, you are behind the downfall of everybody that comes around you. You think it's an anointing in the cross. No, you, you see, you need to understand it. We are now people of love. We, we seek the interest of the other person. Yeah. You know, you must be intentional. You know, sometimes people are always very, very spooky about things on the spirit. They think, you know, when we want to, when God wants, us to, God wants to use us to bless somebody, we might just be reading a newspaper or be on Facebook. You know, the spirit will just descend. I don't know how people. You just say, my son died, but our victory in this 500 pounds. No. That's what people think. It's not like that. Little promptings mm -hmm. in the heart. Mm -hmm. Little instructions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the instruction of the, of the father is keep quiet. Mm -hmm. I must have out. Keep quiet. Love now leads our way. Hallelujah. Love, he says, don't lie to one another. You're lying to yourself. You're a member of the same body. Don't injure the other person. You're injuring yourself. Don't form a committee of gossipers. Look at us. It didn't get it written down. Don't think like that. Just look, look, look at him. Look at him. He, he will not shave. He will not shave. See his beard. Look, look, look at him. Look, look at him. You're not believing prayer. He doesn't know really prayer. He come with his beard. Just looking anyhow. Right? I got brother in the Holy Ghost. Don't, 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 don't be cheap gossiper. When people come to you to come and hear, what's the new news today? What happened this Sunday? And I'm just, I'm serving on the local church, but as a way of life. There is a fragrance that we carry. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Church, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. There is a fragrance that we carry, the love fragrance. Hallelujah. We learn this love in the fact that the Father loves us. Amen. And we have been motivated by this love. Amen and amen. amen. Now, look at it. Because this thing I'm telling you, I'm showing you, and I'm teaching you, it does one thing it grieves the Spirit. What does it do? It grieves the Spirit. Pastor can the Spirit be grieved? Yes. 